Hey guys, it's Clarissa, and welcome back to episode 23 of I'm Just an Asshole Sometimes. If you like Reddit stories that are crazy and like listening to my takes on them, stay tuned. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And seriously, guys, I've been loving making my podcast, and it's really that easy. So again, download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Okay, guys, this is coming June 7th, which is Tuesday. The verdict of Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard was read Wednesday, June 1st, my birthday. And honestly, for my birthday, I was really hoping for a verdict. And to be quite honest, I was really hoping for Johnny Depp to prevail. It seemed like he really, really needed justice. I watched the entire trial, and the more I watched, the more I was convinced that Johnny absolutely needed justice. So anyway, just wanted to throw that out there that the verdict was read, and Johnny Depp was found um, that, yeah, he has been defamed. And I guess defamation is really, really, really hard to prove. And he won $10 million on one count, and then $5 million on the other for um, punitive damages, I think. But it capped off at 350000 So the total is $10 million, 350000 But they also found Amber guilty, um, or Amber heard worthy, I don't know, she won $2 million for the Waldman statements, which honestly, I don't agree with. Johnny's lawyer said that, so I don't think Johnny should be penalized. So anyway, all in all, Johnny is owed $8,350,000. And Amber's lawyer is now going on a little media tour saying how much her client was wronged and how she's going to appeal and all that jazz and pretty much disrespecting the jury, the judge, and whoever else was involved in it. But I don't know. Good luck with that, Elaine and Amber, I guess. But I just wanted to mention that, that, yes, the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial is over, and they um, ruled in favor of Johnny, which, I don't know, I grew up with Johnny. (laughs) I'm going to tell a fun little story. That when I was four years old, 21 Jump Street came out in 1987. I was born in 86. Well, when I was four, whatever, my mom would pick me up from daycare. She'd be done with work, come home, and they'd have reruns of, reruns of 21 Jump Street on. So I would watch that as my mom made dinner. And she told me a long time ago that she always wanted to write Johnny Depp a thank you letter for that one hour of peace she got to make dinner while I was watching 21 Jump Street. I don't know. I always found that funny that, yeah, I, I had a crush on Johnny Depp at four years old. But, I mean, can you blame me? <laughs> I don't know. So congratulations, Johnny Depp. I think it's well-deserved, and he needed justice. I mean, it was just, as the trial went further, you could see that, I don't know, she really didn't have evidence supporting the claims of abuse that went down. And to me, if you don't have any sort of evidence and these crazy stories, I'm sorry, but I don't believe you. So, anyway, I wanted to throw that in there. Okay, guys, for the first one, am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for taking multiple containers of formula out of a couple's cart due to the formula shortage? 26 female, if that matters. My husband and I had our first child last month. I haven't been able to find formula anywhere. He's on a sensitive brand of formula due to the fact that I wasn't producing enough milk to feed him. Last week, I drove two hours to another store just to get some of his formula. The shortage has been very exhausting and stressful to deal with. So when I finally say that my local or saw that my local store had some in stock, I immediately rushed over. When I get to the aisle, I saw an older couple taking some formula off the shelf. 
The aisle was so small, so I just waited patiently. I realized they weren't stopping, and eventually they had about 40 cans of formula in their cart, emptying the shelf. I spoke up, asking if I could ha have just about four cans for my newborn at home. The husband scowled at me, and they started pushing their cart away. I said, excuse me, and that they couldn't take all the formula when clearly it's needed as well. They said they got there first and that they had twins to feed, so basically not their problem. I was so stressed and furious at this point, so I cut in front of their cart and started grabbing a few cans. I figured they hadn't paid for any of this, so why not? I, was gonna, I wasn't going to let my baby go hungry because they wanted to grab all the formula. Obviously, they weren't happy about this and started yelling all sorts of stuff at me, but I quickly made my exit. They called me selfish, asshole, etc., a manager came up to me as I was checking out and said that next time I should get assistance instead of grabbing it. He explained there was a limit and they wouldn't have been able to take it all anyway. I feel justified, sort of, in my actions, but I'm not sure if I was totally correct. Am I the asshole? No. Because, okay, if they're an older couple, guaranteed it's not their kid. And especially, I don't know why, but I'm getting a vibe that they're the type that they're going to buy all this formula and then price gouge it and sell it on like Facebook Marketplace for way higher than what they paid because that's what a lot of people are doing and it's disgusting. So that's just my take. I, I'm i a mom of an eight-month-old that still needs formula and it is so stressful. Friday, I went to Target because my app said they had some in stock. They had absolutely none. So I went to Walmart. They had none. I went to Walgreens. They had none. I was ready to, like, have a panic attack. Seriously. And so I went on Amazon. That didn't look uh, promising. So what I ended up doing was going to Target on their app and I was able to order it. So I don't know. Target, I mean, if you can, whatever. They are, I didn't have to pay shipping. So I found that amazing. And they'll ship it to your house. And I ordered it Friday. It should be here, be here to I can't talk. Be here tomorrow, Wednesday. But I am holding my breath until I get it. But also, um, it's my birthday month, so I get an extra 5% off on all, all my purchases, which is nice. But, yeah, there's a limit of two containers per every 24 hours. So, I mean, that's fine. It's just... I don't know. This formula shortage is just, it's insane to me. I never thought one of the biggest stressors in my life would be finding formula for my son. I mean, it's just, it's absolutely insane. And I just, it's so frustrating. And if I do find some, obviously there's a limit, but I feel so guilty just taking what I can because I know there's other parents out there in need struggling to feed their baby and I just I feel guilty and it just all around it sucks we should not be in this position so to the comments you know sometimes the question isn't if you're the asshole it's not <laughs> it's that it's not always morally wrong to be the asshole I agree and someone said isn't that what the couple might be thinking also this every man for himself ideology is really toxic edit I'm not talking about OP I'm talking about the couple I agree, and it sucks we're at that ideology where it is every man for themselves. And I don't know, in my area, I made a formula page that I don't know if you have some formula, but say you need a different kind, if you need to swap or someone has extra that you're willing to you know buy, just trying to make it easier. I've seen other formula pages on Facebook, and people are getting scammed so bad. This one person... They just opened a package today. I read it on Facebook, and it was, first of all, there's a few empty containers. And then there's one that was filled with, she thinks, flour. But that is so scary because even if you dilute formula with more water, that can totally throw a baby system out of whack where they can have seizures. It, it just, it does a lot of bad. So imagine if you know, putting something like flour into formula to try to make it look like there's more. Or, God forbid, someone puts something like fentanyl in there. I mean, it really wasn't that long ago, the whole cyanide Tylenol thing of the 80s, that it's just, it's terrifying. And I don't know, you think in times like this, people would kind of 
maybe band together and help one another. But when I see people taking advantage of a vulnerable group of people, babies, it really disgusts me. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, why are you scamming moms and dads and grandparents that are trying to feed their child or grandchild? It's not cool. It's like, I just, I don't get it. It's like, stop being an asshole. My God. Oh, I just, it just, I can go on about this for so long, but comments, comments. (laughs) Someone said, I don't know the size is whatever she is, but... The one where I am lasts for about two weeks. Formula holds baby, baby sated longer than breast milk. What? I don't, I can't read this person's comment. Let's see. I don't know if it, it was like this everywhere, but in my area, people were also hoarding food. There were a couple of weeks where I couldn't find any meat at all. At one point before grocery stores started setting limits i saw a couple who had filled their entire cart top to bottom with meat and poultry they were laughing as they were leaving the store and gloating about there not being any meat left to people entering the store most people always be the worst i'm willing to bet that most of that meat they had ended up going bad before they were able to eat it as well a lot of people don't seem to understand that it doesn't last forever in the freezer see i don't get this hoarding mentality either like let's grab everything else so no one else can have it It's just, it's disgusting. And as I'm talking now, I know that there has been one shipment, I don't know if there's been more, where we got 79,000 pounds of formula. And I saw someone on Reddit do the math that it's, that 79,000 pounds of formula that we got is only good for 2% of the formula feeding babies for one day. When it was broken down to that, it just blew my mind away. Like, that's not nearly enough. Like, they need to be having those planes, like, I don't know, going nonstop until, I don't know, there's enough formula for everyone. It's just, it's awful. Let's see. Um, There's a difference between every man for himself and I deserve my fair share. The couple cleared the shells of baby formula. OP said they had at least 40 cans. This is every man for himself. OP took, only took what she needed to keep her baby fed. That is not the same. Exactly. And then someone said, the couple cleared the shelf of 40 cans. They're the assholes. It's like the toilet paper all over again, but now babies are going hungry. Yeah, it's awful. I don't even want to think about a baby going hungry. Like, it just, I'll start bawling because what a horrible situation we're in. It's just, I... I can't explain to people how much this sucks when trying to find formula for my son and it's just, I don't know, then you get some ignorant assholes that are like, well, why don't you just breastfeed? Well, if it was that simple, I would have, but sorry, but couldn't produce enough and then pretty soon it was none. So, sorry, I want my kid fed. So, yeah. And someone said, I cannot imagine going out of my way to be such a greedy asshole, specifically to screw over my fellow citizens. Fuck. Yep. And someone said, right? When I was a new mom, I didn't produce enough milk and had to supplement with formula. The feeling of not being able to succeed at my number one job as a parent was heartbreaking. I am super angry at these formula hoarders. Thank you. It's exactly how I feel. It's like, first of all, you feel like you failed, like, your baby at the number one thing that you're supposed to do. And then you're getting, like, shamed by other people that don't even know what the hell's, I don't know, going on. You know, it's just, screw you. And someone said, we do get things right sometimes, and that's one of them. Fuck price gougers. Yep. I just, I have a feeling that they were going to do that, honestly. And I know the employee explained to OP that there's a limit. I honestly could see, like, one of them sitting on the formula and going through, I don't know, a self-checkout how many times with the limit, hoping to get away with it and not letting anyone else have at that formula in their cart. I don't know. That's what I just, I picture that. And then someone said, actually, they didn't donate anything. The police cleared out of all their storage units and donated everything to the community and their lawyer got them off charges since the state didn't technically have any evidence after they gave it away. It's like, oh, they're talking about, oh, the dude that um, bought all the hand sanitizer and then 
totally price gouged it. I remember he bought like $20,000 worth of hand sanitizer. And he thought he was going to be rich because he's going to jack up the price. It's like super asshole move. Then someone said, not the asshole, 40 cans. These people really went and took the entire shelf of formula for themselves during a shortage. That's absolutely asinine. And I don't blame you for taking the formula. You didn't hurt them and you didn't rob them after they paid. You just took what you needed, something they neglected to do. You acted in the best interest of your child in response to these selfish assholes. And I can confidently say that most people, given the circumstances, would have done the same thing. Good for you for standing up for yourself and your family. I absolutely would have done the same thing. Someone said, I exclusively formula fed from week four, and I don't think we ever went through 40 cans. If American cans are the sizes European cans are, then that's a huge supply. I suspect they were going to resell. Exactly. Someone said, my kid was formula fed for an unusually long time due to having a G-tube. She didn't ever need 40 cans. And someone said, definitely going to resell. Cans come in multiple sizes, but I'm assuming these are the standard size cans and not the smaller ones. The standard size has enough formula for about two weeks, barring medical complications that necessitate more or less formula. The only way someone can actually use 40 cans is if they have multiples. And even then, the courteous thing to do is to buy enough for the next month or so and leave the rest for others. Exactly. Um, one of those, I think they're like, 36 ounces like the big cans that will last my son probably a week 10 days maybe and yeah I mean oh and someone said I mean if it's the small cans and my son drinks about drinks those in about three days they make less than 100 ounces of formula the big ones will make you close to 300 ounces if that's what you're thinking of though and then someone said, there was a guy in Australia who orchestrated a team of people to go in all the supermarkets in a wide area and buy up all the toilet paper during the pandemic. Joke was on him because he returned to the stores a few months later, having been unable to sell, <laughs> unable to sell it. He wanted to return it. They refused. And he was thousands of dollars out of pocket and a house filled with toilet rolls. Good. That's what you get for being greedy. And someone said, we had a guy like that here with hand sanitizer after Amazon and eBay started cracking down on resellers. He threw an absolute fit when he couldn't return it because the store managers right, rightfully essentially said, because fuck you, that's why. And basically complained that it wasn't fair he lost a ton of money trying to prey on other people in the crisis. Yeah, I remember that guy. I think he had his whole garage filled and it's like, good, I hope you have hand sanitizer until the day you die. Like, that's just awful. And someone said, I remember reading that. Yeah, serves him right. Just disgusting how utterly greedy some people are. And anyone doing it with baby formula, of all things, is automatically way worse. These people should be able to be prosecuted somehow. And I agree, because baby formula, they need that to live. That's the only thing besides breast milk that they can have to survive. And I've been seeing these insane home recipes for homemade formula going around the internet pediatricians are saying like do not do this like you know try other things before you get to this point but I don't know just the thought of even making homemade formula would terrify me because I don't know it uses like evaporated milk and I don't know it just doesn't have nearly enough nutrients besides like you're not supposed to give your child milk until one and uh, I'm just hoping I don't have to give him milk sooner than need be I don't know I know there's toddler formula we do have some of that too because our two-year-old is extremely picky and sometimes you know I just feel like if he drinks one of those a day then he's getting all his nutrients and stuff along with the multivitamin but anyway besides the point it's just it's terrifying and I hope it gets better real soon because it's really stressful and just I don't know, new parents, parents in general, we don't need this. It is it is so just panic-inducing when you go out and you cannot find anything for your baby. Like, it is pure terror. So I'm seriously praying it gets better real soon. Okay, this is Best of Writer Updates. This one is... I don't know, it's really 
sad, but I don't know. I figured I would put it out there because just in case someone needs to hear it. My husband is not bonding with our five-week-old son, and I'm not sure what to do. This was submitted on October 27th, 2018. Like the title says, my husband has yet to hold our son. He won't call him by his name. He always refers to him as the baby, and he won't do anything to help take care of him. On Tuesday, my husband moved into the camper to get quiet time, as he calls it. I've seen him for maybe 10 minutes since Tuesday. Up until our son was born, we had a great marriage. I don't know what to do. And then comments made by OP. This is probably totally unrelated and me just being goofy. My husband used to box semi-professionally until he was 28. He had to quit because of concussions, like those football players. At first, I thought maybe he needs an MRI. My husband's co-worker, my husband is a field tech for John Deere, came by yesterday to see the baby. I asked some questions, and my husband has been fine at work, not forgetful or acting strange. So it's probably mental, not physical, right? Then another comment. He's just not himself. If I was to call the non-emergency line to the local fire station and explain that my husband, who has a history of head trauma, is not acting like himself, what would happen? Could they take him to get tested? I'll make the call. I just don't want to escalate this and then be wrong or have him be mad. And then an immediate follow-up comment by OP. Screw it. I made the call. Maybe it's his concussions. Maybe it's something else. The person I talked to at the fire station was very concerned, and they're sending an ambulance. He's going to get an MRI, whether he wants to or not. I'm probably overreacting, but I've seen that documentary about the football players. My husband has had dozens of concussions over the years. The neighbors can call me a nervous Nelly all they want. I'm at my wit's end. Then update. My husband is not bonding with her five-week-old son. Submitted, I think, the next day. Last night, I called the fire station and talked to a firefighter about my husband's strange behavior since our son was born. With my husband's history of head trauma, he was a boxer from 12 to 28. I was concerned. They sent an ambulance. The paramedics evaluated him and told me something wasn't right. They decided to take him to the hospital. We'd been there all night while my husband was getting scanned and tested. They did all kinds of tests involving memory. They used flashcards and mental quizzes and puzzles. I'm in shock as to how bad my husband's mental state is. It's embarrassing I didn't notice how far he had declined. Maybe I didn't want to notice. Maybe it was a conscious decision. I watched him struggle name his hometown. He had lived there the first 22 years of his life. He couldn't do it. Mother's name, father's name. He struggled with answering the most basic questions. I noticed in recent years he talked about the past less and less. He rarely tells stories about his past anymore. I don't know that it was because he basically doesn't have a past anymore. All those pictures around the house hold no real meaning for him. He doesn't remember our first kiss when he proposed to me or very much about our wedding. He knows these things happen, but the specifics of those events are lost to him. A psychiatrist met with me, but she didn't or she wasn't very helpful. She kept asking him about suicide. My husband isn't suicidal. She asked him misleading questions like she was trying to trick him into being suicidal. When I brought up how my husband hasn't bonded with our son, she waved me off and told me she has rounds. The neurologist is awesome. He really cares. My husband's boss and some co-workers came this morning. They were more honest with me today than I think they have been in a long time. My husband, my husband hasn't been a trainer in two years. He used to go and get trained on all the new JD technology and then train, train other techs. It got to the point he couldn't do it anymore. He also has notebooks filled with notes and procedures he should know by heart. They're like his crutches so he can do his job. He rarely goes on field calls alone anymore. He usually takes someone with him. I met a counselor that the neurology department employs to help patients' families deal with the fallout. She told me to prepare to take on more and more of the responsibilities around the house. It's a worry because my husband is the breadwinner and I can't replace his income on my skills and education. She explained that patients with the trauma my husband has exist on routine. When something disrupts that routine, like a new baby, they often can't cope. My husband is staying for a few more days. Tomorrow he meets with a different psychiatrist and then is being transferred to a more advanced neurology center three hours away. With a little luck, I'll have a more definitive care plan and have him home by Wednesday or Thursday. Take care of your brains, kids. Comment by OP. My husband used to go or used to live to go hunting. He looked forward to deer season all year long, bought hunting magazines, watched hunting shows on TV. It was his passion. Then he just lost interest. It was a huge red flag, and I missed it. I was too absorbed in my own petty crap to let it register. Stupid. Another comment. 
That's what the counselor said. It's scary. I mean, he's only 35. To think that he could be like this for another 30 or more years. I'm ashamed to say I had a good long cry. Bills, oh God. A week before the baby was born, we bought a new Tahoe. 72 payments. I wanted a new car to go with the new baby. There was nothing wrong with my old car. Stupid, stupid, stupid. We're still paying on his truck. The mortgage, credit cards, tool payments. The bills from the baby haven't come yet. We're going to have bills from this. We have insurance, but the co-pays and de deductibles are high. I'm trying not to think about it at all. Okay, and then another update. It's been a long and difficult week. My husband went to the city to the major neuro neurological center on Monday, and they confirmed his diagnosis of CTE, chronic, tra chronic traumatic encephalopathy. He was there until Wednesday, and then he came home. We worked with the counselor there, and my husband held his son for the first time. He had this kind of bewildered look on his face. <clears throat> then he teared up and said, this is all I ever wanted, and I can't even enjoy it. That broke my heart. I had to leave the room for a while. Brain injuries are tricky. The neurologist said, the best case is my husband doesn't deteriorate any more than he is. When I asked about the worst case, they told me to be prepared to put him in assisted living. That's something you never want to hear. This whole journey is a roller coaster. We're working with a counselor through a church in the area to try and develop some coping strategies. The biblical counseling is a ministry supported by tithing, so it doesn't cost us anything. We have a standing appointment Fridays at 4. With my husband's injury, he can function well on a routine. Babies don't do routine. At 5 a.m., my husband gets up, then he goes for a six-mile run, then calisthenics, shower, shave, brush teeth, breakfast, and then he starts his day. If his routine is disrupted, he can't recover and adjust. Our dog adjusted to my husband's routine. At 5 a.m., she's ready to go for a run. Babies don't do schedules. It's hard not to get discouraged. I see my husband struggle so hard to adapt. It hurts him that he can't learn the new tasks quickly. I'm patient and supportive, <clears throat> but he still gets frustrated, like packing the diaper bag. He knows we need stuff. He just can't do it without a checklist. Screw it. I'm making checklists. The nurse said it's important to try and make things as normal as possible. Watching a 35-year-old man not be able to figure out how many diapers to take on a trip to Walmart is heartbreaking. I made checklists for everything. If it's something that he does all the time, he's better. It's learning new things that are hard. For the past couple of years, in hindsight, it's baffling I didn't notice. All I can say is I must have fallen into the comfortable routines with him. I didn't question anything. If I asked him to do something and he refused, I just did it myself. It never occurred to me that maybe he wants to go out to eat breakfast because making bre breakfast causes him anxiety he'd rather not deal with. Go ahead and nominate me for wife of the year, although I'll probably run her up to Lorena Bobbitt. The owner of the dealership took us, up, took us and the service manager out to dinner on Saturday to come up with a plan to for keeping my husband earning. The owner is kind of old fashioned and is adamantly opposed to seeing a young man like my husband depend on handouts to feed his family. Thank God. They're gonna assign a junior tech to work with my husband full time. He'll be there on every job helping my husband out. The dealership also has a bunch of old equipment on the lot that they can't sell. It's mostly scrap. They're gonna clear it out in the they're gonna clear out the lot in an auction and whatever money is made will go to help us pay for medical bills. The general manager is also checking with John Deere Corporate to see if they have any assistance programs a dealer tech would qualify for. I think there's a foundation or something. They're also giving my husband a 40-hour check for last week and not docking his paid time off. My husband agreed to let me take over the finances. I don't think we're behind on anything and our credit is good, so it should be pretty easy. Paying the bills and balancing a checkbook has been a real burden on him. It explains why he stopped letting me have access to the bank account a while back. He told me to just charge everything to the credit card and he'd take care of it. Another gigantic red flag I missed. Looking back, there are so many red flags I missed. I feel like an idiot. Shit, I used to tease him about forgetting stuff. I made jokes about him being a punch-drunk old boxer. I feel awful. I feel about two inches tall. I can't imagine how bad I embarrassed him over the years. If I live up to be live up to be 2,000 years old, I'll never be able to make it up to him. The baby is doing great, and we're taking things one day at a time. Now that I'm not so oblivious, it's getting easier to take care of my husband and baby. My parents left on Sunday, and his dad flies home tomorrow. Then it's just us again. It was great having help for a little while. It's too bad we live in such a rural area. The neurology center in the city has outpatient programs that would help. 
It's six hours round trip. It's just too much to make the trip three times a week. We're kind of stuck where we're at. I doubt my husband would get hired elsewhere at this point. We're going to keep a monthly appointment at the neurology center for monitoring. It's the best we can do. It's not like TV where people can effortlessly uproot their lives to do what's best. In the real world, you sometimes have to take the worst option. We meet with a lawyer from our church on Wednesday to set up some documentation so I can handle the finances and make medical decisions. I think it's called power of attorney. He's going to let us all set up for, he's going to get us all set up for the price of one of my homemade apple pies. Thank you for your support. And then OP comment regarding CTE. They took a complete medical history and did a dye marker scan. You are correct. The only way to 100% diagnose CTE is a postmortem scan. However, his symptoms and medical history have led the neurologist to conclude my husband has CTE. It's largely a process of elimination. Given his extensive history of head trauma, it is unlikely that it is anything else. They are proceeding with a treatment plan for CTE. Oh, wow. I, I couldn't imagine what this wife is going through. I mean, to, I'm sure, I know she feels bad that she missed so many red flags and stuff, but, you know, when you get into routines and stuff, I can understand how some stuff can go under the radar, and then, I don't know, sometimes you're in denial, too, and you don't want to see it, but, yeah, the comments. The last two posts have been a brutal two-punch combo. Her feelings of guilt over not noticing her to read, then this. This is all I ever wanted, and I can't even enjoy it. it. was a kick to the gut. The employer stepping up and helping out was at least some good news among it. Yeah, when I read that about holding his son for the first time and him saying that, it literally broke my heart. Like, ugh, I couldn't imagine. I'm 36. My husband is 39. He'll be 40 this summer. And I can't imagine going through a scenario like this. I just, it would break my heart. Um, someone said, my ex-brother-in-law worked for John Deere. He left his wife, my sister in China, completely alone and unable to leave while he took, took off to another country after he said he wanted a divorce. She called HQ and they had her back and did a number on my ex-brother-in-law. They may suck balls for their re <laughs> right to repair policy, but they take care of people. And then, um, that's good to know. Like, I like hearing about companies that are really good to their employees or whatever, because then I'm more apt to support that company versus one that might treat their employees like shit. Someone said, um, let's see. Oh, let's see. A lot of them are talking about John Deere and like how, you know, it's great of them to step up and help. So let's see if there's anything else. Um... I don't know. I just, I feel so bad for this family. I wish there was a current update since the last one was, you know, it's been like three and a half years, but it was weird. She seems opposed to handouts at one point and then completely okay with them from his employer, which Americans would push for good social safety nets. And someone says, I think the employer being against handouts and thus wanting to keep husband working there so he could earn his money. I agree. It's like a lot of people... I don't know, it's pride that, you know, interferes with them getting handouts and they want to continue working, you know. Um, second point is especially important because the whole routine thing, too. I hate that she blamed herself for not noticing, too. Man, in a few years, we're going to look back on this era of allowing and by some actively encouraging children to go through repeated head trauma and think how bar barbaric it was. And said, seriously, I'm in a mental health or I'm a mental health therapist and trained to screen for physical reasons for emotional and behavior symptoms. I've got a toddler and I'm not looking forward to telling my kid he can't play sports. All his friends are when he's older. I'll give him the context and offer off alternatives, but that's a hard no. Yeah, after reading this to my husband, it's like absolutely not. Our boys are not playing football or boxing. Like, no, no, no. So anyway, I mean, I wish there's a happy ending to this, but I don't know, it makes you really grateful for what you do have and just health. It's like, if you don't have your health, you literally have nothing. <laughs> Okay, I found this new subreddit that I really like. It's called Off My Chest. 
My fiancé is cheating on me with my close friend. They don't know I know. Basically, the title, my 26 female fiancé, 28 male, is, um, I don't want to say it, screwing my best friend, 26 female. Okay, so the basic love story, met in college, fell in love, blah, blah, blah. Me and my best friend have been best friends since middle school. I found out through a mutual friend that she, my best friend, told for some reason, I guess she thought that she wouldn't tell me because they're closer. Anyway, I don't believe it at first because, you know, that's my best fucking friend. But the mutual goes into detail about times my fiance was working late or visiting his sick mom, in which he refused to let me come because of the pandemic, which I understand, okay, but it was all fake he was it was all fake that he was even with her so i sit on the news all day come home he's acting normal telling me he loves me but i will wait till we go to bed and then when he's asleep i will check his phone so nothing on iMessage nothing on facebook nothing on snapchat then i open instagram message after messages of sexting nudes talking about how they enjoyed each other's bodies talking about how stupid i was for not knowing I go into the bathroom all the way on the other side of the apartment we share, and I have a mental breakdown. I was hurt and still kind of am. I take screenshots of their messages and send them to myself. The next day rolls around, and I didn't sleep at all. My fiancé goes to work. I take the day off, and my ex-best friend texts me, asking if we could hang. I make, an up, I make up an excuse, and that was the end. Sorry for the helicopter that you hear. Um, Sorry. If we could hang, I'm making up an excuse, and that was the end. I take a long walk, contemplating what I should do next. Those text messages keep popping up in my head, and then I just kind of snap out of it. I had abusive parents who would take things away I love to teach me a lesson, so I kind of master the art of snapping out of love just like that. I go home and take a long bath, and by the end of it, I was over him and her. They deserve each other. Anyway, a week goes by, and I'm at my cousin's wedding, and them interacting is hilarious. They're just so awkward. It's entertaining. I have a revenge plan that is going to come into a plan on my wedding day in a month, so I guess stay tuned for an update. Goodbye for now, and I really hope I remember the password to this count. TLDR. Found out my fiancé is sleeping with my best friend. Edit. Yes, you guys, I have my financials in order. Well, actually, they're separate from one another. We might share the apartment, but I own it. It's in my name. His car is in my name. Our dogs are mine. And for the people telling me to just leave, I'm going to go with no. Why should I leave and let them get away with this? If only you saw how they were talking about me in their text messages. It was disgusting and just cruel. I'm going to do everything to look clueless and play stupid just for a little while. And then boom, it's over. Oh, and he's paying for the wedding, not me or my family. Edit two. The friend is in on it. She will help me with everything. She understands what I'm going through because her husband left her for her cousin. She wants them to. She wants them so look like oh to look like idiots as much as I do. And yes, I'm going through his phone literally when I can. When I can to get more and more proof. I even have a sex tape of them, which makes it ten times better. <sighs> wow, I couldn't imagine, especially when your wedding is. A month away I thank God she doesn't she's not paying for it or any of it and what a dumbass guy to like keep going along with the wedding when you're cheating with your best friend and then like good for her for having her financials in order she owns the apartment she <laughs> owns his car that's awesome pretty much the whole comment section is you know remind me in one month like notifications turned on so I don't know I'm trying to find any. Someone said you shouldn't do it on your wedding day, but at the wedding dinner the night before, make a nice little slideshow of those screenshots. Oh, that would be interesting. Someone put a few questions. Who's coming to your wedding? Is it big or small? Are family members flying in or driving a long way for it? Have you notified them not to come? Elderly guests slash poor guests who are spending money on clothes and gifts. I know you're in pain, but you want to get revenge on your fiancé, but not hurt a bunch of people who are innocent and all of it. If it's a small wedding and none of the above applies, then go for it. Just also remember to call and cancel the businesses who are making the cake and the bouquets and everything as soon as possible so that they don't waste their time and resources. Petty revenge with courtesy for others is what you want to go for. 
can't wait to hear the update if this is real. Yeah, so I don't know. Stay tuned. If I can, I don't know, find out if she went along with it, I'm definitely going to update it. So I don't know. I, I don't blame her. Sometimes pettiness is, I don't know, it's all you got. Okay, that concludes episode 23 of I'm Just an Asshole Sometimes. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and as always, don't be an asshole.